Hi everyone. Um, this is part 11 of the uh, Midnight Rambles series. Um, it's actually part two though of um, doctoring as a wheelchair user because I've had some um, really interesting questions. Most of them have been about the equipment that I use. Um, so yeah, I thought it would just be easier just to show you. Um, uh, one of them was um, how I do a catheter as a wheelchair user. So how I would put a catheter into a patient. And actually it's, um, it's dead easy. It's just exactly um, the same as any other doctor would do one. So just like I mentioned the other day, I do the same as everyone else, um, just maybe in a slightly different way. So for a catheter, um, the actually the end of, of beds um, come off. So, you know, we don't often do that, but they do come off both the head end and the foot end. You can lift them off. So I would lift that off and um, put the knee brake on the bed. So like um, instead of the, the bed being flat, it's sort of like this at the end um, and then get the patient to sort of shimmy closer to me. So they're in a good anatomical position for me to put that in. I can do it from the side. Um, but yeah, you just uh, work as the patient in front of you and as the situation dictates. So um, it's really no different um, uh, uh, than an able-bodied doctor. Um, yeah, I got a question as well saying, did I ever get the um, the impression, did people ever have the impression that I was on, like was just a desk-based doctor? And yes, that has happened. I have had to sort of correct people that... Um, I'm just the same kind of doctor as everyone else. <laughs> um, I do all the same things. Um, so being a wheelchair user does not make me any different to um, to my able-bodied peers in that clinical area. Obviously, doctors in different areas do different jobs. So, um, so if I was in psychiatry versus in uh, medicine for the elderly, I would do very different jobs. Um, but yeah, so I have had that. And um, probably by the skill I've just described, I've shown quickly that... Um, that's not the case. So, uh, so yeah, so I thought I'd show you my kit. Now, this sort of kit is all pre-COVID relevant. Um, and I say that because, um, like most other people with long-term conditions, um, I haven't really been out of the house because I've been shielding during the lockdown. So, um, most of these things will still be relevant. Um, probably my trusty tourniquets will be forever resigned to the bin. They probably should have been pre-COVID. Um, but they're so good for uh, for fragile and difficult veins. Um, so I really like them. And I would always wipe them down between patients anyway. But um, I suspect in the world of post-COVID, um, I'd probably be shot on site for using one of those. So I'll have to get back and get used to the little uh, rubbery disposable ones, which I, patients don't like and uh, I don't find are as easy to use. But hey-ho. Um, so all these things are wipe downable. I would just use the hard, hard surface wipes that you would use um, all around the hospital um, to, you know, wipe them down. And, and actually pre-COVID, if I'd known that a patient had, you know, a condition that was potentially transmissible via droplet, I wouldn't have taken my Trabisac, especially into the room anyway. So that's no different really post-COVID. So here you go. Um, so this is my Trabisac. And this is my down under bag. So I'll show you the travel sack first. So this sits on my knee and it's um oops, so it moves this way. It's opens up and it's brilliant because oops, there's one of the offending tourniquets and some gloves, every doctor's friend. Because I can keep um my this uh I don't know what you call it, but you can write on it and you can keep some things inside, like blood forms and paper to write on. And this is so handy because for me, um, when you're on a ward round, um, you know, you need to be writing as you're moving and I can't like hold something and write and push. So at least this way I can have my train of thought and write when I get a second to stop and I have everything with me so I don't have to worry about finding stuff. Because otherwise I'd be putting the paper like down behind me or try and balance it on my knee and it would just fall off. So this is brilliant. And like I say, the travel sack um, having beanies um, in the base of it. Uh, so the beanies are sort of in here. Oops, as you can see. Um, and then it's flat on the top. So it's great for, I can pop that on my knee if I'm putting like, um, say, a sharp spin or a procedure tray or something to take with me to the bedside. I can use that. So it's super, super handy. Um, the down under bag. This is a great little invention, whoever invented these. Um, so you'll see on my chair, 
whoops, you're not getting a very good view there, so right? <laughs> it's not very flattering. Um, can you see that little clip there? So I got one either side of those uh, on my chair, and basically they clip in to these, and the bag then goes underneath your chair. Um, so it hides down behind your legs and you don't see it, so it is so handy. So here's my bleep, which normally would just go on my lanyard when I'm working, but I'll just put it in the bag so I don't lose it. Um, yes, the NHS still uses these old-fashioned uh, pagers, and I think we're probably the only industry in the world that still uses them. But, yep, that's one. Um, and in here, pen, tape, <laughs> all the things that <laughs> a doctor's best friend. This is the tendon hammer I was chatting about. So you can see, compared to a regular tendon hammer, uh, which I do have here from, like, OSCE practice way back as a student, um, see the length? See, so it's very, it's kind of difficult to swing that as a chair user, I get the right swing whilst holding the joint so that it's the right weight. Um, so, and also they're dead difficult to carry around and you can never find one on the ward when you need one. Um, no one carries one of those around with them, but <laughs> they're hard to find. So I have this one that fits in my bag. It's still perfectly weighted. And it means that um, I don't have to go on that hunt to find one if I ever need one. And also I have one that I can use. So that lives in there too. Um, a little tiny, uh, another little tiny clipboard again for writing. Just in case maybe I don't have the Travis out with me or I've left it behind or whatever. Um, shh, there's another tourniquet. <laughs> um, and oh, a trusty torch, a good torch, not one of those little ones, the pen torches that you press, because inevitably they are always out of battery whenever you need one. So this one's handy uh, for your exams and things. And what is in here? Oh, just more. Sometimes it's handy to have a different coloured pen to remind yourself for notes, or if there's maybe a blood pressure trend or something you want to like tell yourself is a different is important. Um, you can do it in a different colour. Um. Other things. Oh, stethoscopes. They're kind of important. Eh? So my trusty stethoscope, um, that would live either around my neck when I'm working or I can fit in either the Trabasac or my down under bag. So I can put it in there. Um, I do also have, um, which <laughs> these divide at doctors a wee bit. I have an electronic stethoscope, which I purchased it because I find that, um, as I explained to you, that a... Uh, when I want to listen to someone's chest, I shimmy forward in my chair and listen, and auscultate from, you know, both sides, hopefully auscultate both sides from one side of the bed. But because I'm putting a little bit of effort into leaning, sometimes the sound of your hand just slightly moving the joints in your wrist or whatever can be transmitted through the bell of the stethoscope to me. And then that sort of uh, messes up what I'm hearing. And wards are super noisy environments, so it can be really difficult if you're trying to listen to, for, um, you know, subtle sounds, subtle chest sounds or subtle heart sounds. Um, so that's why I purchased my electronic stethoscope, because it is um, like noise cancelling and uh, amplifying. And I have to say, um, I sort of go three phases of using it. Uh, I've had varying success with it. I remember at the very start thinking, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. What a waste of money. And then having a couple of weeks where I was in love with it. Um, some people think it's a bit like pretentious to have an electronic stethoscope, but actually I have a good reason for having one. <laughs> it's not just because it's a gadget and just for the fun of it. So I sort of go through phases of using them and um, I don't carry both with me though. I, I tend to just rely on my, my regular um, stethoscope and that's the one I use. And yeah, I have this one sort of in backup but in backup at home, so don't know how useful that is, but <laughs> there you go. Um, so yeah, that's, um, oh, and the Trabasac as well, a real dead handy thing about it is it clips onto, um, cause it's got like these little D-rings, see the little D-rings? I have two carabiners on the back, so the carabiners click onto my rucksack, so uh, just the top handle of my rucksack. So when I'm coming into work, that um sits on the back of my chair on my rucksack my down under bag is underneath my chair and so my hands are free to push and i have no trouble that way so all the things are kind of handily hidden on me um so i have them when i need them and i'm not carrying around this you know masses of stuff 
Um, but equally, I'm not caught short that when I'm trying to do something, I can't find equipment I can use or don't have easy access to stuff because people put stuff in their pockets um, or they just carry it around with them or whatever. And I can't do that. So, um, yeah, th that's the equipment I use um, as a junior doctor. And um, I think that's probably all that's useful to tell you just now. Um, I'm trying to think, were there any other questions that I've forgotten? No, it was mostly show us your stuff. And how did you look after? They were mostly the doctoring questions. Um, but yeah, any anything else, fire it my way and I'll be uh, happy to um, show you or, uh, or chat it through for you. Uh, so yeah, uh, ciao for now.